I believe we're all set. And do I see everybody here? I think I see everybody here. Okay, so I call this meeting back to order at 634. We were in executive session for the purpose of discussing negotiations with non-union employees. I'll begin this meeting by saying that in accordance with chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, signed by Governor Baker on June 16th, 2021, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 30A, this meeting of the North Reading School Committee is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings. So thank you everybody for joining us in your summer. Um, we'll begin with public input if anybody here has anything they would like to publicly speak about? The forum is yours. Seeing and hearing none, I move on to student report, which we do not have this at this time. And so we will go right to our new business. Um, we have a proposal for the American Sign Language Sign Language Club. I know my son already wants to be a part of it, so. He just suggests that it not it not interfere with uh, the theater if he wants to do the theater. But I turn it over to Dr. Daly, Dr. O'Connell. This is the Piercio, somebody other than me. Thank you. I'll just start by thanking um, uh, Bran and Catherine for joining us tonight. And we have, um, you know, this is our process that's outlined in the contract where um, staff members, students. Uh, may propose a club, the principal then signs off for it, and then it comes to myself for a signature, and then we bring it to the school committee for the approval. There's a two-year pilot process. Year one is a set price, um, a stipend for the administrator, um, so the, the staff member who works with the students to collect data on frequency of meetings and some of the requirements. That's a two-year process, and then after that, the club or activity is placed on the on the grid based on the number of hours and time that we've met. So this is a part of that process. And what's great is this came in on time for the spring. We're able to budget for this as a possibility for the fall. But um, it is pending your um, your approval. And so I'm going to hand it over to Dr. O'Connell. Can't hear you, Kathy. I was muted. Hello, everyone. <laughs> it's nice to see everyone. I, I just want to add that. Um, Having new clubs is always exciting, and this proposal is something that, since I've been the principal, has no one has yet to propose an American Sign Language Club. I'm very excited about the possibility of running this club. It, it came about a little bit this past year when we ran our MTSS intervention sessions, our weekly sessions. I asked Brian to come up with an enrichment session that was connected to world language, and she kind of surprised me a little bit with an American Sign Language uh, enrichment, but I thought it was outstanding. And she can speak a little bit to the students' feedback from participating in the enrichment opportunity. And it uh, was enough that she feels there are students who would be interested, along with Mr. Brandon Buckley, perhaps, uh, to join the club. So we're hoping that you will approve. I'll let Brian, if you want to speak just briefly, Brian, to, to running the enrichment this past year. I see you have a visitor. <laughs> yeah, so um, for MTSS at the middle school, um, you know, if you're not one of the core academic teachers, you um, can create kind of these exploring, discovering, understanding, enrichment type menus um, for the students this year, which, which worked really good um, trying to serve all of the cohorts simultaneously during this kind of MTSS intervention time. Yeah. Um, and so I did make um, a two-part sign language lesson. Yeah. And just one moment. I'm so sorry, Susan. Um, and so we had actually really great participation. This is my first year teaching in North Reading. And so I wasn't really sure like what students were gonna pick it up, what they were gonna do with it. If halfway through it, they were gonna be like, this is boring. Um, but we had really, really great turnout for those students that did fill out the exit ticket from that MTSS enrichment, which was two parts. Most of them did both parts, which kind of spoke volumes to me because if they were interested enough to, to do the first part and then continued with the second part, um, that was kind of a really positive, you know, influence for me to see. And so we had about 36 seventh graders um, 
complete this enrichment, we had about 32 sixth graders and 22 eighth graders. And those are just the students that actually filled out the exit ticket on the MTSS enrichment menu. They weren't like required to fill out the exit ticket. So I think it may have been more students. Um, some of my students that I had this year said that they did this enrichment um, in class, in Spanish class. And um, they told me they just didn't fill out the exit ticket. So I imagine that the interest is actually quite higher. Um, the proposal is to meet every other Monday. It doesn't have to be a Monday. I wrote Monday on the form just for the sake of writing a day. Um, kind of figuring out how the rest of the schedule rolls out this year. I can be really flexible with that. Um, I thought an hour a month um, would be sufficient, but I'm not really sure. Like I said, I'm new to this district. So whatever your parameters are um, for clubs, you know, in the times that you meet and the frequency, I can just meet whatever the goals are for that in continuing to collect data. And I think the main goal for the club really from a teacher's perspective of world language is to have the students kind of gain insight, those that are interested um, into understanding that language doesn't necessarily have to be just words. Um, you know, and while most middle school students know what sign language is and what it services, I don't think that they can know, really grasp the understanding that this is a language, just not in the traditional sense, um, you know, using the symbols and letters that we use. So it's really exciting. Um, I'm looking forward to see how it rolls out this year. Uh, it's exciting that hopefully we'll all be in school together. And so it will go relatively smoothly, I hope. Um, and I didn't really want to exclude it to a specific age group, like a specific grade. Um, but like I said, uh, you know, with the direction of Kathy, I'm happy to do it, you know, however you guys want. Thank you, Brian. I think we would just take questions and certainly any questions we can try to answer them together, Brian. Okay, any questions? I'll just go around, Rich. No, I, I, I don't have any questions. It seems like a really good idea. Janine? Um, I think it's an excellent idea. And if I remember correctly, there's an American Sign Language Club in the high school. So this would be perfect to, you know, swell on up. Yeah, segue them. Yeah, definitely. We will cover deaf culture and deaf community as well. Um, that's my hope. Do we, do, we, do we know how many people participated in the high school club this year? We do don't. Know? Oh, do you, Patrick? Do you know? Um, uh, a little bit off the top of my head. I'd say it's about 10 to 15. Yeah, I can um, ask Amy St. Arno as well. Yeah. And get back to spot if you like. No, it, it, I was just curious. I mean, it, I think it, I think having longer is better. So if you have, you know, three years, four years is going to be, you know, harder than picking up for seven years. So. Um, Chris, comments, questions? No, I think it's a great idea. Diana? I agree. I think it's a wonderful thing to start. Yeah, I, I, I love it. I mean, I feel like I feel like the offerings at middle school are, are quite a bit more limited than high school. And so this is a great opportunity to have another club. And my only other question is, maybe this came up with last year when we approved the high school club, but is American Sign Language eligible for the seal of biliteracy or not? I believe it is. It okay. should be. Um, yep. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, yeah, I just feel like because we're, we're trying to put world language earlier at, on. So if, if anybody wanted to get the seal of bioliteracy in American Sign Language, they probably do need to start earlier in order to meet that requirement. So I think being Absolutely. able to start in sixth grade would be better. So, yeah. Good. Excellent. So there's no other comments or questions. I will entertain a motion to approve the American Sign Language Club at the middle school starting in the year 2021-2022. So moved. Hmm. Thank you so much. It's really exciting for me. Thank you. I'll second the motion. I don't think they voted yet. Wait. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we can still say no okay. to it. We have a, we have a, a motion by Janine and a second by Rich. So we'll do a roll yes. call vote. Janine? Aye. Rich? Aye. Diana? Aye. Chris? Aye. I'm an I as well. Passes 5 0, unanimous. Now you can be excited. Officially, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And thank as, far you. As, per, as far as parameters, whatever you guys decide is fine yep. with us. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Thank you, both. thank you very much. Bye bye. Enjoy your summers. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Okay. Moving on to school improvement plan updates.
turn it over to Dr. Daly. Thank you. I just wanted to take a couple of moments just to talk about, you know, reflect a little bit about what we heard last meeting. There was, you know, the presentation of the school improvement plans. Um, there was a lot of uh, positives and there was definitely some constructive criticism that, you know, I went back and reviewed a lot of that. As you know, my some of my goals are about working with the principals on um, this alignment between NRPS 2025 and their school improvement plans. And, you know, I just, I just wanted to provide an update to everyone that I have met with all of the principals, especially those that received the most um, constructive criticism. And we, we really have already been started working on some, some great ideas and great plans to, you know, to improve both the plans and the presentations for next year. Um, so as we discussed, there would be some smaller updates that might happen in the fall, the winter, the spring um, from, from the principals to provide you with, you know, that additional data that was requested and some of the elements to show the goals really included um, for next year moving forward. So what we're going to be doing, I'll be speaking about this later as well, but as we <clears throat> really defining our, our vision for the district, through our, our plan, then very quickly shifting <clears throat> to make sure our school improvement plans are aligned. And our forum on the August 17th is to bring our curriculum leadership um, group back together and for those folks to be able to, um, and then so this would be like your traditional, you know, department curriculum leaders as well as your special education leaders. When we meet in August with everybody, this is the first time that we've um, we've done this as a district. So it's not just the principals and the directors. It's not just the assistant principals and coordinators. It's also all of our teacher leaders. So a group of, you know, close to 40 to 50 people coming together in the summer. Um, that's when we can really start to talk about how those plans can be improved at the school level. And so there's going to be some comprehensive work there done. Every department having a goal that's aligned and every department looking for those um, ways to communicate out really that question of how do we know that our students are learning what we're asking them to learn, right? We're, we're in consensus about what we want them to know and be able to do. And the question that I think we need to be able to show in our, in our plans is, are they learning and how are we measuring that? And especially in a year without MCAS, we are going to have some preliminary MCAS data as well this year. But um, in those areas that don't have an MCAS test or in years when MCAS data is not um, as available, that we have some other measures. And I think we saw that with iReady data at K-8. to I think we need to think about what those measures are at the high school and make sure those are included as well. In addition to those, um, you know, traditional measures like SAT scores, SELA biliteracy scores, MCAS scores, AP scores. So I just didn't know if there was any uh, questions or comments or follow up from last time. I thought it would be good just to give a, an update based upon um, this discussion from last time. So, I mean, I, I'll begin and just say that, you know, I mean, I know, I mean, I, I know I had some of the constructive criticism last time. And I mean, I, I, don't, I don't want it to overshadow the fact that I think we're in a very good position in North Reading. You know, I mean, I think all of the schools are having really good things happen. I feel like, you know, COVID was a challenge that, I mean, I, I have more and more friends that I know that like teach in other districts and people just point to how well things went in North Reading last year. And I think that's a credit to the principals, um, you know, that, that manages the whole time. So I think our district is in a really good position, but, you know, the improvement plans are to try to you know, not just rest on the laurels, but to continue to push us forward. And so, and I think, I think Rich made the point with, you know, at the high school in particular, you know, we didn't really get a chance or, you know, maybe I didn't get a chance to really talk too much about the good things that are happening. So I do think it's important to, you know, call out the good things that are happening. It's not that we, we feel like, you know, the, the, the schools are flawed and we need to, you know, a plan to, you know, turn them around. I think things are going pretty well overall, but you know, I also think that, you know, something like a school improvement plan shouldn't be just like a task that you have to complete. It should be something that there's some thought into it and it should really be the uh, guidance for every teacher and every, you know, which trickles down to the students. Um, and so, you know, I think we need to see a little bit more in some of them, but, 
you know, it's not reflective of a concern, broader concerns about the district or the schools. That's my only follow-up comments. Anybody else thoughts? <clears throat> okay, I see a lot of nodding heads. No, good. Thank you. That's that's very helpful <clears throat> to me as I'm trying to work <clears throat> with our principals on these on these improvements. So I think everyone's committed to that and. You know, people do get used to doing things a certain way. And obviously with the new superintendent, I'm asking them to do things a little bit differently. And, and because of COVID, we're kind of doing it a little bit out of order where I'm asking them to do some improvements on their school improvement plan to align with a plan that we are still basically working on this summer. So I think it's going to be a lot smoother coming out of, uh, coming out of this summer, a lot more clearly aligned. And uh, I will touch on that again a little bit later. So thank you for that. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, next one, we move to the Department of Element, and we have nothing for continued business, just looking back. Uh, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education Accountability Update. Turn it over to Dr. Daly again. Sure, I will I will just say for the, you know, I, in my administrative report, I will address some of the continued business aspects of, um, you know, reopening in the fall. So certainly we, we will talk about that. That is not a, uh, something that we will not discuss tonight. There's not a ton to discuss, but we can discuss the what ifs a little bit. Um, I got an, an email from the Department of Ed about 5:54 tonight or something. I said, "Oh my God, is this the is this the information we've been waiting for?" But but it's not. So, um, but this this other piece I did want to share with you came out in later June, just to frame the conversation around accountability for the fall. Um, so without the MCAS data from the last couple of years and without some of that information, also just given the fact that the districts did take MCAS, but the playing fields were so different. There were so many variables this year with hybrid, remote, um, full in-person, different size districts, COVID numbers, all of that. Um, they will not be doing any kind of ranking and accountability this year, and it will be very similar to um, scores from uh, and, and, and rankings carrying forward. So for us, that's really good news. That means the little school is a blue ribbon school now for the, I think the third year in a row. Um, we've got our, our a very high achieving bachelor and hood schools as well and middle school and high school scores and accountability rankings and, and our district rankings all, all remain the same. Um, so we've got those you know level ones and level twos there, which is great news. I just wanted to share this information just to publicly clarify the question about, you know, is there going to be accountability this fall? And I personally think this is the right thing to do. The fact that, like I said, there are so many variables to start comparing schools to, to one another um, might be more of a comparison of other factors than, than academic achievement. So I think this is the right decision, but we still will get those results. We'll be able to look at them and, and make our own comparisons. Uh, against ourselves to see whether students and cohorts and, and uh, groups are improving. So we will have data um, and you know I will continue to advocate for less testing because uh, I think everyone was happy with what happened this year. There were less days of testing. Now I, I don't know what that will look like moving forward. I'm not sure what, um, I don't have all the details of why they were able to be less this year and whether that is something that continue moving forward. I don't know whether they, typically they, they made pilot questions for the future, maybe that's what they didn't do this year. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm certainly going to ask those questions and continue to advocate for less testing as teachers, principals, students, families, everyone I've spoken to said that it was much less of an exhaustive task this past spring, and if testing does continue, um, I think we can keep it to the, the minimum that's needed to uh, give us the information we need. Any thoughts or questions about accountability? Anybody? Raise your hand, speak up. Um, I, I would just say uh, mostly that I agree with what your last comments there, um, that reduced testing that still gets us the information we need is a win-win for Everybody, it's, um, um, you know, there's always a vocal group in every town who says we should be doing much less testing. Um, and so if we can say that with a straight face, then I think that's that's a good thing, especially if we're still getting the information we need. So hopefully you'll be successful. Yeah, that's the hope. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I concur. And the only, only other comment I would have is that I think some of these accountability reports end up being a little bit hard just because North Reading is a pretty high performing school. And so I think a lot of this is focused on districts that struggle more. And so we end up really splitting hairs to try to see if we've met our goals because, you know, three kids were absent and we need two kids to be absent the next year. And it's, it's compared to some of the metrics that are out there. I don't know how useful this is compared to some of the other things I've seen, but you know, it, it's out there. We have to do what we have to do, but I, I agree with not doing too much testing and I just don't want to get too caught on, on this specific report just because I'm not sure, you know, how much data we really get from yeah, these accountability I mean, reports. <laughs> I feel like it's always, it's always up to us to understand what it is and isn't saying and, and, and frame that message. So, I mean, I think we'll continue to do that. Okay. It's been a few years since I've done um, some of our real accountability. I mean, you figure you go back six, seven years now, AYP was ending. So they came up with this crosswalk and things look different. Then you had park and MCAS and you couldn't really compare things. So that, there was always these variables. We finally got to a couple of years in a row of the new MCAS where we were able to make connections and have some reports and then COVID. So it's really been a, a strange um, requirement, but there are, there are still federal um, requirements around having an accountability system. So the department has applied for a waiver and that's really what this explains here. So um, we will have presentation in the fall to go over the scores for the local level, but it wouldn't, involve all the accountability um, other than to say you know we're still blue ribbon at the little or wherever whatever other positives we can say that we're carrying forward and you know continue to celebrate so okay, okay. any other comments or do we move on to the school committee calendar so i had some comments on the calendar but i will let Dr. Daly, introduce the calendar first. Sure, and forgive me if there are some uh, typos, <laughs> but I did a draft here that I've shared out. It's got the 26th, it's got August 12th, and then I rolled forward the dates. Um, I, I, I did most of uh, the Mondays with, the, with a few um, Thursdays as well. I know that that might be different for you now as traveling is, is coming back. That could be a question. Um, I moved a few of the items around, but for the most part, the topics are are um, are similar to last year. What I um, not sure of what your comments may be about, but I just wanted to frame my understanding is that through April, we can um, continue to meet as we have been meeting, uh, meeting virtually, but also in person and, and conducting that virtually. I think that's allowed. I believe through April. What we've discussed um, is, to, is to, you know, should we continue to allow the public to participate virtually no matter what we're doing? Um, and so the idea would be even if we have to go back to full in person, um, allowing members of the public to come to full in person, could we allow both um, within that time frame? So let's say we start doing that, all things uh, going well with, with COVID, let's say in, you know, February, for example, we start allowing the full meetings in in uh, in person, but also the public access, which we've seen has increased participation. And if we had, if we tried that while we were still within that window, and we safely and and productively were able to have our meetings that way, and the restrictions are are lifted in April, we may be able to continue that moving forward. So I just wanted to share. I think that's worth exploring, and I've already worked with with NORCAM on this because if we're going to continue to do our virtual meetings um, with our Chromebooks in front of us or our laptops in front of us, but now we might have a presentation of 10 students, you know, it's going to be very challenging for us to turn our cameras or our laptops to try to capture those students and try to continue to produce what I've called a, it really is a nice package. I mean, right now I've got on display here what I'm sharing and that's what's being captured on the recording. So the good news is NORCAM had a lot of great ideas about getting a, you know, a camera that would be not just the ones that we've used in the past, but one that's actually sitting in the meeting as if it were another, another someone joining the virtual meeting. So they would be able to switch between 
the the live meeting shots as well as the you know from inside the meeting so that could capture um both aspects so it's the dates but it's also the 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 process for meetings that i wanted to share tonight i'm not sure if that's what you were getting at mr buckley but um well to hear that. yeah so so when i when i start with just kind of where we're at with with how we do the meetings <laughs> So as everybody knows, we are able to do virtual meetings, as, as Dr. Daly said. But if you look back at what open meeting law actually requires, there's a minimum that is required for an open meeting, which means that you have to allow the public in. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that you can't also allow it remote. So specifically, the members of the committee currently need to be in person when the remote meeting ends. So when the, when the governor's order ends, every member of the school committee would need to be in person unless the select board authorizes represent uh, authorizes board members to not be present. So I think we should continue to be in person, but if you are traveling, you at least right now, while it's remote, we have the ability to zoom in. Um, once April ends, that will end and we'd have to be in person, but the chair does have the ability to allow the meeting to be recorded and presented in any forum. So, you know, as long as the chair is comfortable with doing it, it's fine. And I am, I do think we should continue the Zoom meeting. So I think we should work on a hybrid approach this year because, you know, it just allows somebody that's at home to be able to, you know, Zoom in and hear that whatever they're interested in hearing. Um, you know, I don't really see a negative of that. You see the huge turnout we got tonight. Maureen's here. She probably wouldn't have been there if we, uh, if we were in person. So, um, so th that's my thoughts on like what we're, what we're already able to do. And I think we should keep doing that. Um, <clears throat> my other, my only comments on the schedule, Dr. Daly, there's a couple of ones that I think are errors. As much as I love everybody here, September 25th is a Saturday. I don't think we want to be meeting yeah. on a Saturday. <clears throat> Thank you. So September 25th is a Saturday. April 15th is a Friday evening. Again, love you guys. Don't know that we want to be uh, doing a school committee on Friday evening. And March 3rd is just one conflict that I will not be able to make. And that is the first budget presentation. If we could possibly do the Monday instead of the Thursday that week. Broader, I would just say in the second half of the schedule, there seems to be a lot of Thursdays. I think maybe we keep it a little bit open because unfortunately I am probably gonna start traveling a little bit. Most of it's gonna be domestic and I could probably get away with Friday mornings. But a lot of times if I go for weekends that might be i'm leaving thursday night so i don't know what diana's thoughts are on travel because i know she's the other one that has some travel diana my travel just started again at the beginning of july um it's currently wednesdays it's going to merge into thursdays so i don't know that's going to pose a, a big challenge for me because i actually will be on the road on thursday evenings a lot of the times um mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm trying to gauge that right now. I'm traveling every Wednesday, but it, it's going to be expanding to more than one day. Yeah. And I, and I, and I go on the, on the weekends a lot of times, like I'll go and be somewhere Friday, Saturday, come back Saturday night or Sunday morning. Um, so I don't know if, and I know Dr. Daly, I know it's a pain in the butt for you when we're like later and later or earlier in the week. But I mean, I don't know to try to have, well, I'm sure I'm most people would. On Monday, so I can tell you that Monday has, always been open for me so yeah and it's usually the same with me because i'm not doing international travel as much where i get maybe get back on monday um i don't know if we can maybe we can still try to maybe find a couple of thursdays here and there but i think we might need to try to push back to more mondays if that's doable we'll try to keep them quick but no promises is that okay dr daly with you of course yep no that's fine and then i apologize for the typos it's they, those should be Mondays, the 18th and the 25th. So I will move so, those over. And um, so September 25th should be when? I, I, sure think, we... I think it should probably be the what, the 27th, maybe. So I will I will go back and uh, okay. and make those adjustments. And then 27th, that, and then April 15th should be. I think it's the 18th. So I'll just check that. I'm sorry about that. Oh no, that's fine. Um, 18th. And then if, yeah, if, if possible, if the March 3rd can go back, just because I'm going to be away that weekend, I know already. Okay. I don't know if that could be the Monday. Um, <clears throat> the only other question is for the setup. 
if we're on our computer, some of the long ones, we, we, we don't have power right where our, our tables are. I wonder if we could either reconfigure the room somehow or run an extension cord or something because my computer dies by the end of it. And so some of the long meetings, I don't know if we can get power to if we're going to be on Zoom because I, I like the setup here where people at home can see who's talking and yeah. you know we, we can see them. But I, I don't know if we can work on possibly getting power at our stations. Sure. We can definitely do that or we could – reconfigure how we sit i mean we we don't have to sit the way we sit you know? no i agree we could sit in the in the first row <laughs> which has power and you're facing the people you don't have to move every time we put something on the screen you know we we kind of took a a model from the old library and moved it to the dll but it doesn't really recognize the. we didn't build it the way the dll is set up you know the dll is set up to be facing the podium and facing the screen and we're always got our backs to it so we might we might want to think about that you know this, we, it is nice to be at the at the tables but is the dll uh, the, is the dll the best place or would the library be better even yeah i, I think it's nice though when you do have an audience to be facing the audience right so well, that's that's what i was going to say i mean that's the, the reason to be in the tables in the DLL is because if we have an audience right. in, in person, yes. if it's just us, it doesn't matter. But. Right. So we can, we can definitely get a power strip in there. We can think about some different, some different ways to set it up and uh, we can try some different things. We could have assigned seats on both sides so that you just can move back and forth depending on what you need. So, yeah. I'm just wondering, even if we went to the library where like there's, we've had some, there's been some public meetings in there before that I've been to where there might be better power where we can sit and still face people. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I like the DL, but the DL will probably work for Norkim better, right? It is. It is equipped yeah. for them. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't move no. from there based on their setup, but, um, but we, we can continue to, to play with that and, and make adjustments <laughs> as needed. So all, all good right. suggestions. Other comments, questions, thoughts on the school committee calendar? Okay, so it doesn't doesn't say we're going to vote on this right now. I mean, my my only other question is the next meeting that we have while we're while we're talking about the school committee calendar. Our next meeting, we had moved it up a little bit because we thought maybe we'd be able to get it remote versus, and then everything was extended. Um, I do think that that meeting, and I think Mr. McGowan said this at the last meeting, like. It's our planning session. It would be nice to be together. A lot of times we do that in the superintendent's conference room. So that would only be in person. It would not be a Zoom meeting. It would be a time that we would sit down together there. So members of the public are welcome to the conference room. Um, can people make the date of our next meeting? I don't even know what that date is. It's August something. But I know we moved it up a little bit because of. Right now it's set for August 12th. August well, so, the, so there's there's a there's two meetings, right? The, technically, there's the goals workshop, and then followed by a um, correct a, a regular meeting. And so, if Diane is traveling again on Wednesdays and Thursdays, would we be better to push it back to that following Monday, Diana? It's definitely better for me, but that might be a week where I don't have to do the Thursday if if it's an issue to move it to Monday. Um, I'd also so Monday would be me. better. What sorry. with you, Chris? Sorry, I, I'm sorry, Diana. Uh, Zoom awkwardness. I, Monday's better for me as well. Yeah. So could could we possibly move Dr. Daly that next meeting because we're going to be in person if with travel and everything? We we had moved it up. I had moved it up to that Thursday because we thought maybe that would be able to get in a remote, yeah. but then it was extended. Could we possibly move that meeting back to August 16th? Yeah, sixteenth was the date that I had proposed. I just want to check with Michael. Are you available on the sixteenth? I, I forget your availability that week. Yeah, I should be available on the the sixteenth. It yeah. was um, it was actually have, believe it or not, it was actually the twelfth that was going to be challenging for me. Yeah, great. So, yeah, I have the we have the retreat the seventeenth and eighteenth. So that's why I know that's a week I'm definitely going to be around, not going anywhere. Um, so if we did the sixteenth. We would still do the 4.30 for the goals workshop and then the meeting at 6.30? Correct. And the goals workshop, why don't we do that in the conference, in, in your 
the superintendent's conference room, and then the meeting we can do, maybe we can post the meeting and do that in the DLL with the Zoom link as well. It's just gonna be easier in the conference room to do the goals, I think. Mm -hmm. So maybe that part will be, you know, we'll have the remote access for that as well. Sounds that good. Sound, okay, if that sounds good for everybody. I don't think we, do we, we, I don't think we need a motion to change the meeting, do we? I think we just adjust as we need, yeah. No, I think as long okay. as they're, I mean, I, this isn't the official posting, right? I mean, as far as no. the regulations, it's, this is just the proposed dates for people to plan ahead, but Correct. when we officially post them is are the official meetings. So. Correct. <clears throat> Yeah, but I, just if we're going to be in person, I just want to make sure we have as many people there as we can. And so if the 16th is easier, it, it'd be easier for me as well. So um, yeah, it's fine for I, me. So yeah, I would have made either, but OK. Um, anything go. else on the calendar? Are we good on those? <clears throat> um, and then, and actually, the only other thing on the calendar is I know we moved it up to 630 before. We are going to be doing remote. I mean, 630 is still the right time, do we think? I think it's probably still the right time because then we can have executive at six if we need. And if, you know, some people are traveling in Boston, it would be, I don't think we could do earlier than that, but we aligned oh, you're on the saying, time. You're asking going, going forward, about the going time? forward generally. Yes. Yeah. 630. still the right time we think. Okay. I wouldn't want to do earlier for sure. Cause of the okay. Boston. Well, although, right. Although I have to say that right now I'm, my company is planning on being uh, in, in person uh, in the office Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. So Monday meetings shouldn't ever be an issue. But yeah, I'm I'm only going to be in a couple of days, and I probably won't be in on Mondays either. I'm just thinking if I know Dr. Daly preferred later in the week, so he's not staying up really late. The, the if long we, Mondays are always hard for sure. Yeah. yeah, if we could move it up even earlier, I don't know if you'd want to move it up even earlier, Dr. Daly, but I don't know. That's why I just want to check on. Yeah, I I think we're open to it, but I I think. You know, six thirty is probably good for now. Definitely, okay. I wouldn't start later than six thirty. I, I think yeah. six thirty is right. So. Okay, I didn't know if anybody wanted to try six, but I'm fine with six thirty. Good. This says no. Okay, <laughs> superintendent's goals, Dr. Daly. Thank you. So I just wanted to share um, what I sent out, um, which is the form um, for the end of cycle. As you know, I'm I'm coming to the end of my second cycle. So this is a summative. So we're currently we do two times a year. Um, so what I've done is I've shared once again the um, I'm going to share this tab. So this is my um, evaluation site. the The items here for year three is just a proposal for the future. Um, but because I'm also working on my goals for next year. But what you're going to want to focus on would be to scroll down to the year two, which is the year two timelines. Um, the formative assessment that I submitted, and then all the information on goals. So I'm continuing to update this. So over the next um, week or so, this will be fully updated and ready to review. And then um, I don't know if Chris or Janine want to speak to the process, but I think what we did last year was I created the document that's attached here. I think I shared that with you folks, and then you took me off it and shared it amongst yourselves. Is that a similar process that you want to do again? Chris? Yeah, I think that, I mean, that worked for me. It was simple to do, and it seemed like everyone could access it. And, and Dr. Daly, only question, I, I tried to access your site, and it I had to request access, and I don't know if that went through or not. Did you get that request? It froze. No, I, I think I would just suggest trying to get, I actually had a little trouble loading it. I got a 404 error on there, too, so I, I got to figure out what's, you shouldn't have to request the access. If you're using your school account. I was. You know, I was. Yeah. So if you have an issue, again, just let me know and I'll take okay. a look. But I, I had a little trouble even tonight bringing it up. So something was just a little um, glitchy with it. Okay, thank you. And so uh, Chris and Janine, are you guys going to send around to us to do the comments again before the next meeting? Is that the timeline? We have to do it for the next meeting, right? Yeah, I'll... Um, I'll send these things out um, in the next day, and then we can go from there. OK. Janine gives a thumbs up. Thank you. Um, Any other? I have, a, Rich, I have a general question about this process. And Dr. Daly, you can sort of tell me 
So typically, I, I guess my question is, are we giving the feedback in a way that's helpful and meaningful? Um, I know that when we present the feedback, we uh, usually someone will compile comments and and uh, you know anonymize them. Um, I guess I, I'm asking: Are we are we providing in the in the actual meeting where we're discussing um, you know our our feedback? Are we providing that in a meaningful way, or is there a better way to do it um, uh, in the public meeting part of it? And that I mean, open to anybody, but I'm just curious what you think, Dr. Daly. Yeah, I'll say. I mean, it's you know, it is something new for me to have your evaluation done in public session. Um, I felt that for last year, um, I felt that, you know, it was, it was, it was very helpful to hear, um, you know, your constructive and, and, and positive feedback as well. Um, you know, getting the written form to be able to look at, but to be able to, to take notes and listen and jot down some ideas and some areas for improvement, I think is, um, you know that worked that worked fine for me and i think um you know I, I think being as transparent as possible i mean i i'm hoping i i guess i also have the question back to you i know in the past it's been more of an elect uh, a hard binder that you could come by and visit i've tried to do the the website and i hope that that's working for you folks as a way to to view some of the evidence so is is that working for you It certainly works for me. I I, I, I I like doing it that way better for sure. If I can get in, that would be good, but yeah, yeah. I, I've, I've never looked at the binder. So yes, it's probably better for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Chris is on top of sending everything out and we're all gonna be prompt and not the day before be doing it. So Chris and Janine can, uh, Compile our thoughts. Well, let's not go making promises. We're not going <laughs> to. Okay, moving on. School committee goals. Thank you. So, yep. just a, yeah, just in a similar uh, manner, I thought I would um, just speak to this process and just make sure that we're on on top of it. That Chris and Janine can share out. But as we identified in the calendar, there would be a um, a meeting on the twelfth to go over the um, goals for next year, which, you know, I will share as much as I can that comes out of our retreat with you. I'll, I'll share that out as an update so that you can see some of the district goals and make sure that we're, you know, somewhat in alignment with our school committee goals. I think it would make some sense going into that workshop for you to have gone through the process of um, the self-evaluation for last year. And then you'd have that in your minds, even though we haven't discussed it, but in the workshop, we can think about what needs to build moving forward. And then at the meeting after that is when we would talk about the um, publicly sort of the, the assessment of your goals for this year. Does that make sense to you, Janine and uh, Chris? Yes. Yeah. Yep. So Janine, are you, are, are you or Chris going to be sending out the self-evaluation form as well? Well, I think uh, Chris did the superintendent last year and I did the school committee. So if that's okay, we'll just leave it that way. Yep, I'm by me. Cool. Okay, but we're talking about it August 16th as well then. So we'll get that as well. Yes. <laughs> My only suggestion for this next evaluation, I think we, or sorry, the, our next goals for next year, I think we should do similar to what everybody else is doing in the district now, some sort of grid as well. Um, where rather than having a big list of things that maybe we try to do something similar to what everybody else is doing with, you know, maybe our four big goals and then, you know, two or three objectives under each of them. I don't know what other people think. We can talk about it more at the budget or at the uh, workshop, but I think, I think we should sort of try to align more with what the teachers and the administrators were asking them to do um, rather than just have a running list of tasks that we're supposed to do. Do people think that would be useful, helpful, the right way to go or not? <laughs> I I do. I think it's definitely something, especially if we're going to, and I, and I think we should try to have 
you know, think hard and it's a little harder for us in some ways, but we need to have, make sure we have measurable goals too. So if we're going to ask that of everyone else, we need to be able to do that as well. So. We can talk about the workshop, but, you know, sort of similar to last year, sort of similar to last year, I think we should also come in going, um, thinking about any new ideas that we haven't done, things that we want to put on there. And then, you know, we'll, we'll, we, we have our four main areas and we can just kind of try to find two or three tasks for each of them so that we had in total, we have maybe, you know, eight, eight to 10 points, something like that is what I'm thinking. Okay. We'll do that at the workshop. Um, Great. NRPS 2025 update, Dr. Daly. Sure. I just wanted to share um, two items here. Um, let me just bring this up. The, uh, as I mentioned earlier in the, in the evening, the uh, administrator retreat is tomorrow. And, you know, one of the things that we are, are going to be doing, a major part of what we're going to be doing is the development and continuation of our, our strategic plan, NRPS 2025. So a couple of things that are a little different that we might be able to think as we, as we work for some of our goals. Um, we've done some naming. So we created these indicators that are just, you know, numerical in their, in their nature. So for example, and some of this may change between, you know, obviously after our meetings, but under equity, diversity, and inclusion, we have like E11, curriculum instruction assessment, E12, high quality PD, E13, diversity of workforce hiring. So they're, you know, easily referenced um, for those focus areas. And then under those areas, there's going to be initiatives aligned with each year. But when you think across the big rocks, the E11, oh, I got to just jump to this one. Give me a second. The E11, um, Similar with student services, there's SS11, which is also curriculum instruction. There's SS12, which is PD. So there's that when we talk about synergy a little bit, going back and forth and how it connects across the different big rocks, that should be helpful in us trying to frame um, some of our discussions. So I just wanted to share that with you as something that we've been working on. Um, the work that we've got ahead of us, though, is to take each of these um, – areas and continue the visioning process. So I know many of you participated in the workshops that we had on back on June 22nd, and that was uh, very successful. I would say we had uh, members of our community, members of our, our parents, families, guardians. We had some student voice represented. Um, I thought it was a very um, well, you know, well represented and well um, you know, the student voice especially really stuck out for me when we did some examples together and you had, uh, you know, a sixth grade student who was uh, speaking what was on their mind and really helping us to get um, some information into our, our plan. So what happened is we collected all of that information that was submitted by both the administrative leadership teams and also our teachers, I should say, were also part of those presentations. Um, we collected them all and we've we now have um, the exercise we're going to be doing tomorrow and, and the next day, we have a band of all of the vision statements. So let's say for MTSS here, SS21, which is the multi-tiered system of supports, we have, you know, let's say two or three administrative visions for what that looks like in 2025, maybe a teacher vision, maybe a parent or community member vision. And then we also have at the top of that grid, we have um, where we are currently. And so the work we're going to do over the next few days is to say, what do we need to do to connect the dots between where we are and where we want to be? And so that's really the work that, that's going to be laid out for us in the next few days. So I just wanted to give you a little update ahead of our retreat. And if anyone wanted to pass along any thoughts or comments based on either the workshops or the work we're doing here, I just wanted to hear your feedback. I'm muted there, sorry. Um, I'll begin, Dr. Daly, and just say that I, I went to one of the workshops and Mr. McGowan was there with me. And it was your ability to navigate tough situations is fantastic. I mean, we had a very diverse group of community members at, our, at ours. 
picked one of the toughest topics we could have picked and it didn't end up in any screaming or yelling or anybody upset. And I just, I mean, you navigate these situations so very well that it just, it, it reiterated to me how, how lucky we are and fortunate we are to have you at, at the helm making these decisions. And so, you know, I can't say that I completely understand all the process and I was kept trying to go back like, what am I supposed to do with the back to the future stuff? Like, it's just not a process that I'm used to doing, but you know, it was just so artfully done. It was great. Um, and in terms of, you know, the goals, I kept saying I was going to submit some myself and I never did, but I'll just say that when we, when we hired you, I remember we had a lot of discussion about what the next plan for the district was going to be. And I just want to make sure that we, you know, kind of reiterate some of the discussions we had then things about like flipping the classroom, you know, um, making sure that we try to keep moving forward with, you know, trying to get full free day, full, um, uh, full day kindergarten for hopefully reduced or, or free. A lot of the things that we talked about then I think are still relevant here. Maybe even like we were talking about less testing earlier, you know, and, and some of this, and I imagine that's all on your plate already, but I would just reiterate, we had some good discussions when we were um, doing that interview process that I hope also make their way into um, 2025. Absolutely, yep. Other thoughts on the workshops? I mean, again, the workshop that I went to was very good. I just sat back and listened for the most of it and it was artfully done. I, I agree, that was a, a great experience. And, you know, I think we have to, uh, thank and congratulate all the community members who were there because yeah, it, it was artfully done, but it was also all well received, or at least, or at least um, uh, calmly received by everyone. So I, I, I thought that went really well. Um, I'd be interested to know, Dr. Daly, uh, after these, after those sessions, how much uh, feedback you sort of received uh, that people went back and went through the process, you know, after the after the presentations. Um, how much did you actually get from that? Yeah, I would say it was a, it was not exhaustive, but it was definitely um, thorough. I would say for all of these um, focus areas that are listed here, and there's a good number of them, I received at least one for everyone, and some had two, three, four. So it, it's we're gonna we do have our work cut out with us trying to combine and coordinate some, but there's certainly some overlap. Someone may have given feedback about student voice, but it also was about, you know, change the curriculum instruction. So, um, but we definitely have enough to work with. And I, and I'm, I'm very happy that we did hear from multiple voices. And as I said, during the presentation, just because someone put it in there doesn't guarantee that it makes it into the plan, but we are really going to try and be respectful of um, as many of those ideas and try to have those, uh, you know, thoughts and voices represented somewhere throughout the plan. Okay. Any other thoughts, comments, questions? Anything you want in 2025? Ask now. <laughs> okay. Routine matters. We have some minutes for June 21st. This is Embriana. You want to lead us through this? I would like to make a motion to accept the June 21st <laughs> open session minutes as written. Second. Okay, any comments? Anything missing? Not that I saw. We, I actually read out all of these. Um, I will take a roll call vote. Janine? Aye. Diana? Aye. Chris? Aye. Rich? Aye. I'm an aye as well. Uh, budget update. I see Mr. Connolly. Mr. Connolly, would you like to do a budget update for us? I would, yes. Thank you, Mr. Buckley. So, um, I'm happy to report that the final budget uh, report for fiscal year 22 is included in your packet. And um, I was really pleased with how the fiscal year closed out. Uh, you know, everyone certainly, and I, I, I do like to recognize members of the business office staff who, uh, you know, a lot of work goes into trying to collect the invoices and, and, and so much happens really from um, the middle of June to, uh, you know, that's th this time period till the, the middle to the end of July. And um, 
we really was pleased with with the effort uh, by all in, in the office. Um, and, and I'm happy to report that, uh, that we had a very smooth, successful closeout. Um, we were able to meet the special education, um, you know, certain, you know, prepayments and even exceed that amount um, that we had forecasted during the budget uh, fiscal year 22 uh, process. So we certainly have uh, much uh, additional layers of flexibility as we enter uh, the fiscal year 22. Um, we were able to really navigate a lot in this unprecedented uh, year financially. Um, there was certainly a lot of unanticipated, as you can imagine, expenditures because of the pandemic resulting in the need for not only you know, upgrades to various um, HVAC equipment and ventilation equipment and um, additional supplies and materials that were needed for PPE and, and cleaning and sanitation supplies on the custodial um, standpoint. Um, there was also a significant amount of te technology expenses that was needed as well as instructional software. So a lot of um, uh, unanticipated expenses that we were able to certainly take care of and address during the, pro the, the, the budget um, during the fiscal year. A lot of that occurred in the summer months as we prepped for the reopening and the hybrid model. Um, and not only were we dealing with an increase of expenses that uh, we maybe didn't always anticipate, we had to be very flexible and fluid and try to stay on top of the, the most current information that, that we had at, had at uh, by the Department of Education. Uh, we also received, as you can see by the, the spreadsheet that Dr. Daly is sharing, um, that's included in your packet as well, um, in the final page of the report, uh, a variety of, of uh, relief funding um, from both the, the federal and the state. Um, most of these were, federal, were federally funded that were disseminated through the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. Um, so we were able to, unfortunately, with the staffing, additional staffing needs for nursing, for cleaning, for custodians, for technology, um, for instructional support and intervention tutors and, and building substitutes and a, a variety of, of, of staffing needs um, that we addressed, as well as the equipment and the supplies needs for, for safety and sanitation, we were able to to use this this funding, maximize the funding, and I think we did an exceptional job, certainly leveraging and in in, uh, in managing these the, these funding to to the best um, to make it the most worthwhile and advantageous to the district. So, what's reflected on that final page three of the report, um, you can see some of the the level of funding that we did ex expend um, from the reopening grant from SR one from the Remote Learning Technology Essentials Grant, which funded hotspots and Chromebooks and internet Wi-Fi access um, from what we received mid-year, which was the Prevention Fund State Program, which helped the continuation of, of sanitation supplies and uh, as well as help fund nursing costs for the for pool testing program and, and, and contract tracing as, as well as additional cleaning and touch point cleaning. Um, we also received um, the the CARES Act funding, which we worked very closely with um, the municipal and the finance office, and certainly Michael Gilberto and Elizabeth Work um, town officials were so helpful to work with Dr. Daly and I to identify a good portion of the the town's 1.3 and change funding from this CARES Act. Um, to identify a little bit more than five hundred and forty-eight thousand um, dollars for the school department, um, and we are also in the process of working with Liz Rourke to transfer some funding over for FEMA, for that we will we will get reimbursed for through FEMA, and that was specifically geared towards school expenses um, be after January. This FEMA allotment was from about January seventh or eighth or so um, to the end of the year. And we were able to identify costs that we know will be eligible for custodial overtime, for touch point cleaning that occurred throughout the year, and some some contract tracing and so forth for our nurses. So, 
Um, there was a lot to manage this year, uh, and everyone uh, in certainly certainly stepped up, and I was really pleased with the efforts um, by all, by by the business office team, and um, certainly the administrators and everyone was was a big part of of pulling this this all together to to really give the the educators and the professional staff, the teachers and the the, the paraprofessionals and the tutors and the nurses and everyone that was certainly made made it work, the technology and the technicians, what they needed, and, um, as well as the, the on the operations and the custodial operation and the food service operation was really very, very different. And we were able to use, as you can see, um, this level of funding that was at our disposal to help offset some losses in the food service program and, and keep that program running. And I, I think, the program that we did deliver in terms of the, the remote program and grab and go program, as well as the, the in-school program really was beneficial to a lot of families. And we were, we were able to manage the, the finances of that by supplementing um, through the use of some of the reopening and CARES Act funding and so forth to, um, to make everything work and then end the fiscal year in very good standing and i think we've done that and i think not only were we able to do some good things at the end of the year with um th through the our ability to save and leverage some of this funding so we had we def definitely had a higher projected balance in the final quarter of the year because of some of this available funding and we leveraged it so well that we were able to do some things like higher higher special ed prepayments and even the, the ability to purchase some technology equipment and, and and do some instructional materials and those types of things all to set us up in very good standing as we begin fiscal year 22. Um, and there was there was certainly a lot a lot to manage and there's going to be a lot going on with the end of the year financial report which uh, we're beginning to prepare and work on um, in in the coming weeks. The two levels of funding that those two the, the non-grade out version the SR2 and the SR3 so the, the, this is funding that we have not expended yet. Um, but this is funding that we're going to be expending the SR2 to remind you is, is we, we will be expending that in fiscal year 22, according to the budget. And we will use, the plan is to use the SR3, which we have until October to officially file for this funding. And, but the plan is to, to make that available in subsequent fiscal years, 23 and 24. So we're using, um, you know, about 211 to 220. $25,000 each over the next fiscal year to really keep some of the the, the, the essential um, you know, new initiatives and new programs through nurses and technology technicians and addressing learning loss and addressing the mental health needs of students through school adjustment counselors to really make sure there's funding there over the next three fiscal years as we continue to, to monitor the progress of the district. So all in all, I think it was a uh, a challenging year financially, um, but with the help of this funding and with with the the team approach that we and the support that we had by all, not only on the school side with the the work of the administrators and business office staff and so forth uh, to manage all this, as well as the the town officials, um, certainly um, everyone kind of worked together to to make everything work and the support of, as we all knew of the of each of you in the school community and the finance planning team throughout the budget process. So uh, I'm happy to report that we, we closed the year out well, um, and we will be able to meet um, the revolving accounts that were somewhat uncertain. I think we we're, I think we're rolling over good, healthy balances in, in those accounts, like the busing account, like the athletic revolving account, like the food service account um, to, to be able to continue to deal with a level of uncertainty. And I think I think that continues to exist, although we're certainly in a much better place than a year ago. I think there's still some uncertainty there that we'll be learning about. It's still very fluid um, as we approach September. So, um, but financially, I think we're in a good a good standing. And, um, you know, it, to, to look at the, the final report that I, that last page, um, is in the town meeting format that I that I send over to Elizabeth Rourke to highlight our, our closeout, and I think we're in a good standing to 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 you know just be giving back just a small amount of, of, of money below below two hundred and fifty dollars, 
And to really only be carrying forward a little over $85,000 into July means a lot of, believe me, that that doesn't happen easily. A lot of work went in, went in um, by members of the business office staff, Sapita Pai and Rosalie McKillop, who are the senior accountants that worked really hard to to get the invoices in on time to be able to to pay those as quickly as we can. So um, I'm just, yeah, I'm just really pleased with how, how we've wrapped up the year and dealt with the, the unknowns and the uncertainties and the challenges and really pleased with how we chose to use the and leverage the the COVID-19 funding. We'll continue to, to do that into the future. Um, and I think our revolving accounts as well, which was the biggest thing that was uncertain, are in a good, healthy, healthy place um, as we as we enter fiscal year 22. So, um, you know, there's certainly some challenges and uncertainties lie ahead, but I, I think we're in a good position to to deal with them. So with that, I'll open up to any questions. I have a couple of supplemental reports, but I will open up any questions on the on the final fiscal year 21 budget update. Okay, questions from anybody? I, my only two questions, uh, Michael, number one, so food services, where'd we end up for food services? I was looking there, did we, did we break even or was that like with some money put in there? So we did not break, e break even in terms of the, the program. Um, the program lost, um, quite honestly, about, about $100,000, but we, we did break even in terms of the, the supplemental funding that was used to um to to cover the the program loss so we should we use some reopening funding we use the assistance of a, an equipment grant and we use some um some cares act funding and that that limited that loss and we were essentially carrying over just about the same amount that we carried over the year before so we have about three months of our uh, average operating expenses um we'll be carrying over into next year which is always the the goal and so we are uh, despite the loss, which every every program in the state dealt with, um, yeah. we're in we're in good we're in good standing because of the assistance that we received. And and what about bus passes? Can you update on bus passes? Like how many? How are we doing on that? So we're doing well. I think. Um, are we filled anywhere? Any buses filled so yet? We are we are close to capacity. So we essentially designed the program with the addition of those two buses and what we anticipated, knowing that we may not return to the bus pass ridership level that we maybe once had pre uh, the pandemic back in 2019, 20, we felt we would see though an increase and we, we did experience that, that increase. So we're, we're up about 150 passes overall between elementary and secondary. Um, and we are, we have availability at the elementary level. Um, in terms of ridership space, we are close to capacity at the secondary level. So we, there's no there's no one is on the wait list currently, which is good. But we have about five buses that um, are very much at capacity, which is about 50 riders per bus at that level. Um, so we're just kind of monitoring it. And um, we've been able to make some changes with the additional of the, of the two routes to accommodate everyone's requests and needs to date. And we're actually very close. We waited a little bit just to see if there was any additional requests coming in or applications, but we plan the first week in August, we actually plan to mail the bus passes for those that have signed up. So. Excellent. And, 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 and I may, I tease sometimes, you know, like you, you are very thorough in everything you do, but I just want to say how much we appreciate your leadership throughout this pandemic. I mean, I think, Every aspect of everything was challenging this year, but there was funding coming from different sources. There were grants to be had. There was a bus contract to be done. There was food service program that was, you know, struggling. And, you know, I think I speak for our committee when I say that we have complete confidence in you handling those those challenges and knowing that you don't leave any stone unturned. You don't leave any money that is potentially, you know, out there that we could potentially get. And you know, I mean, with with everything that's gone on this year, I mean, it, we are so so fortunate to have you and your staff here to you know guide us through this. So thank you, you know, from the bottom of my heart for all the work that you've done this year because you know you you really have been the you know a, a one major force behind the scenes keeping you know us afloat through this. So thank you. 
Yeah, I I appreciate that, um, Mr. Buckley. And I, thank you. It was a lot, was a lot of definitely a team approach. And um, but I that, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Welcome. Okay. Any other comments, questions, thoughts, Dr. Daly? If I could just echo that comment, you know, Michael, thank you for all your guidance and leadership this year. It was a challenging year and you know through all these grants and all it's just amazing as you recap you're just thinking back all those meetings all those webinars all those forums um you were so well prepared for everything that got thrown at us and i know with your staff trying to close out a year when we were trying to figure out so many things as they were happening um great work by everyone and, and thank you for everything you've done thank you i appreciate that thank you um okay you have other reports you said? Uh, yeah, there's a couple of reports, yeah. and I was going to give a quick capital update as well if, if folks okay. want to hear it. Sure. Um, but I'll start with just the, the other report um, that were in the packet. We were able to reconcile um, just late last week the student activity uh, fourth quarter report, and that was included in your packet, which that reflects activity from April 1st, 2021 through June 30th, which is the fourth quarter of the fiscal year. So we were able to certify those uh, account balances with the bank balances in that report that shows the reconciled balance through the end of the fiscal year now, June 30th, in is in your packet. I think these accounts, again, are in good standing. The, the sub-account balance is reflected for the high school and the middle school. Um, so you can kind of see the activity and the balances in each individual active club. Uh, but I think, again, I think a good a lot of, a lot of um, the accounts are in good standing. And I think, I think we're well prepared. We are going to, we are, we are due for an audit. Um, so we will be having an independent um, audit company firm, CPA firm come and audit the active in the fall, probably late September, early October. Um, but I think we're in good, good, position to um, to address the audit. So any questions on the student activity report? None by me. Anybody else? Great. First thing I had no comments on. Okay. Um, and, uh, any, any other reports or is that? So the, the final one before yeah. I just want to give an update on capital was uh, the end of the year financial report was a supplemental um, handout that Dr. Daly sent with the packet last week. This is the the, the end of the year financial report. We usually do this in March, or um, but the every audit firm in the municipality and school district had until the end of June to complete the report this year, or, or the, they have the report audited. The report was still due in uh, September, um, but they gave audit firms because there was so much happening uh, more time to do the audit. So this was done kind of in May, early June, and it's normally done in February, March. But I'm happy to report everything went well. There, there was a few um, items uh, uh, that needed to be amended, which I'm happy to report. Everything's been amended and the report's in good standing. Um, but there were a few uh, findings this year, um, but there were small minor things um, that have all been amended and taken care of. So I don't know if there's any specific questions, but I did want to put you in that we're in good standing there and um, we'll begin work on this year's report for fiscal 21 very soon. No comments by me or questions. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Connolly. So do you want me to do capital or do you want me to wait? As oh, yes. here? Yeah, yeah, no, do, do capital. I saw, I, I saw the last time I was in, in Boston or in North Reading, I saw the uh, project started at the little school. So I'm, I'm curious yes. to hear about that amongst the other capital items. So yeah, I actually took a lot of photos. Um, I can I can share my screen if people want me to do that or, um, yeah. okay. So yeah, I, was I was impressed with, uh, the, uh, um, I think it was pretty quickly after town meeting, the, the, the tweet came from, uh, the little school that the project had started. It's uh, it's it was a no uh, no fooling around uh, kind of project, I guess. The, the right. Yeah. Project. We we were we kind of jumped right into it. Can you, is uh, folks seeing my screen? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um. So yeah. So everything is in. I just want to give a quick update because I think we we definitely did try to jump right on the projects to make sure there as much to, is going to get done, and I think we're on on progress to do that. So going back, some of these were. 
Uh, this was a, the, a pickup truck that we actually received this year in December, and it was actually approved back in the June uh, fiscal year 21. So last June town meeting, that was the one item that did go through for uh, last fiscal year. We had two projects that were approved in the fall, and those got done in the spring at the October town meeting. So the, the Hood School Handicap Accessible Lift got installed and it's been certified and inspected. And this is the picture of the lift. Um, we, this is the one item I don't have pictures for. I went over there today and the company wasn't there, but we do have a company working on those HVAC upgrades, um, making upgrades. It's really C wing, B, B wing. And it, uh, we're able to leverage those funding as much as possible, making some upgrades to the energy management system in certain areas. So I think it's going to be much, much improvements there, but that that project is underway. A lot of the 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 um, they haven't been on site too much to date because a lot they actually pre prefabricating building the stuff in shop, and then they're going to kind of bring it in and just install it. So a lot of the work's happening off site, believe it or not. But I think I think it's going to be a big a big upgrade to the little school in terms of ventilation and and um, heating and cooling, control controlling, and it should help save even make us more energy efficient. Um, the ones that we so you just an update, we got six projects approved this year. The multifunction activity school bus got delivered in July, so we've already received. This is the new bus, um, so we're going to put that uh, right uh, to good use right away. And actually, believe it or not, it's already been used by the summer school program and some of their field trips. So they're already making good use of having access to the two vehicles and avoiding contracting out. So it's been. It's already been used a couple of times, which is great. Uh, we are we are waiting delivery of the toolcat. It's been ordered. We think we're going to receive it by mid August to the end of August. Um, so we're anxiously awaiting the delivery of the toolcat, which was approved in the in June town meeting. Um, the project that we started right when school got out, the week after school got out, and they're completing it this week. And I've been really impressed with this company who who won the bid. And they've done a really good dry zone contracting. They've done an excellent job. They've repaired the soft bits and the fascia at the little school. They've done really neat, clean work. And they've really done, they've really worked hard. So they're almost done. This project's almost done. It'll be done uh, this week. Um, the paving started. Um, they actually were doing some of the prep work in early July. They came over and did some prep work. And then today, this is, this is, these pictures are from today. I drove over there, saw the work in sight and the paving will be done uh, this week probably by even maybe by wednesday and then we'll be able to work on the striping and, and so forth but um this the paving it, it was coming along really nicely um around lunchtime today um uh, certainly the computer devices were in the process of ordering to receive the devices so we're we it's, expect to continue to put the devices in good use and then we've ordered the smart boards for each building and that that project should be completed in the coming weeks as well. So um, certainly made really good use of um, the capital improvements. Certainly appreciate the work of the capital improvement planning committee and Obis Beltwell is on that committee to, to receive these nine projects from last year and this year have been a significant upgrade to a lot of areas of our operation. So it's been it's been great. And then obviously the softball field through some outside funding got got completed. So we're we're pleased with how how that came came out as well. Um, great. So I just wanted to provide an update, but we're we're working we're working um, hard on those these large capital projects this summer as well. Great. That's great. Um, I have a quick Go ahead, question. Rich. Yeah, I'm just going to ask um, if you expect or, or have seen any issue getting the computers, getting the the, uh, the Chromebooks. Uh, yeah, we we don't. Um, that those lead times have gotten faster, so I I think we'll be okay, and I think we're in um, in good shape, even as it is with some of the COVID money, um, that we can kind of be a little more patient with expending this this allotment and make sure we. Mm we get the most latest upgrade and the latest version and so forth because we were able to really leverage some of that that covid money that was there but we we anticipate it won't be an issue and and and, and thank you for jumping on those capital projects i know sometimes there's money in other departments that's allocated and it's not used 
And that's an important part of it. Just add, add, you know, allocating the money is not enough. You also need somebody that actually goes out and, you know, does the necessary, you know, you know, vetting of different processes, different contractors and puts that all together. So thank you for doing that. And I think we, we talked about the toolkit so much. I think we just need to name the toolkit this year. We have, to come up with the, we have to come up with a name of that toolkit because I feel like we've talked about the tool. Well, maybe it's just me uh, talking about the toolkit, but we, we need some name for it. Definitely excited for the tool. I mean, I know it's, yeah, I feel like since about 2017, we've been trying to get, get access to a toolkit. So we're very excited to when that's going to come in. I think it's going to be really Perhaps helpful. we should sell the naming rights, Scott. There we go. <laughs> Mel wanted something named after him. We'll call it the Mel. <laughs> yeah. The little Webster. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, I think we're done with the budget. Um, thank you, Mr. Connolly. Thank you. Staffing, anything going on? Are we hiring some people? No? We are, but I don't have an update prepared this time. We'll do it all together when we get a bunch in. Okay, bids and donations. Mr. McGowan. Yes, indeed. I think we have one, right? Uh, I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation in the amount of $588.04 from the E. Ethel Little Elementary School PTO for the purchase of uh, LabSonic personal headphones. Second. Okay, any comments, questions? Mr. McGowan? Aye. Mr. Papa Facilio? Aye. Ms. Boutwell? Aye. Ms. Imbriano? Aye. And I'm an aye as well. Passes 5-0, thank you. Subcommittee updates. We've been very active, nothing happened. Administrative report, Dr. Daly. I, I will just share the subcommittee. It just crossed my mind. That we did we did have an SSPC meeting, um, which is a subcommittee technically. That, that was on June 19th. Um, which meeting, I didn't go to. <laughs> yeah, the meeting started, didn't quite um, complete. There were not enough members there to take a vote, I believe. Um, but there is a discussion with Mr. Crucci to have a, an upcoming meeting. And we are talking about... Um, what we're trying to do to use some of that funding to support other projects, um, you know, in the district. So there may be another meeting hasn't been scheduled, but it's something that we are discussing. I think I captured that Janine. Yeah. Um, administrative report. Yes, please. All right. Give me one second. I just wanted to share very quickly, uh, some good news that the, um, Military, uh, the, the U.S. Marine Corps, um, as, well, as well as the American Volleyball Coaches Association has given an award to North Reading High School, recognized uh, Anna Burke, Abigail Gerber, Sarah Gerber, Grace Gorman, Elizabeth Kelly, Rose Morelli, Aaron Scanlon, Megan Slattery, Jessica Selecki, Celia Stendel, Sophia Trichetta, and Christina Valenti for their outstanding academic performance. So we were one of about 400 uh, girls teams nationally that were uh, up for this award. And so that's a photograph of the team there. And their coach, Mr. Maloney, was very proud and shared that. I know that Mr. Rosa and Mr. LaPrette and others worked um, with Mr. Maloney to submit for the team. So that's a nice award I wanted to make sure we recognize tonight. And, and what, what were the requirements to get that award, Dr. Daly? Do you know? Is it like a certain GPA or – yeah, I'm not exactly sure of all of the standards, but the uh, the the, uh, the it's all about they have to have very high academic standing, um, as well as being participants for the athletics. But I don't have the exact specifics. Okay, thank you. Okay, and the second item I just wanted to speak, as I mentioned earlier, I just wanted to provide an update on what I'm hearing about um, COVID. Uh, for the fall. And as I've been sharing with, with uh, everyone that I've spoken with at this time, you know, for the summer program, we have had, um, we did have one incidence of a, um, a positive staff member, which we did alert members in the program. To my knowledge, we are continuing our pool testing. I know we're doing that. Um, but to my knowledge, there were not any other people who were impacted because of that positive case. Uh, it's something we're monitoring very closely. We, you know, strongly recommended that those students who are unvaccinated and any staff members who are unvaccinated 
uh, would wear a mask, but following the Department of Health and Department of Education regulations, um, we're not mandating that. The question that I'm asked most frequently is similar to what we saw in Boston. Are we going to have any mask distancing or other requirements for the fall? Um, at this time, I'm not aware of this. I did hear from the commissioner that something will be coming from the commissioner and the Department of Health soon with more information. I'm not exactly sure which direction this is going to go. As I mentioned, Boston Public Schools did require masks for, for students and staff, um, but they're not enforcing the distancing requirements. So one of the questions that, that I know I have and that I know all of our administrators have is if something like that were to be in place, what does that mean for lunch when the masks would come off? Because if we're going to say that you have to wear masks at a certain time, uh, what, what does that mean for when the masks come off? So we really need to think through the different ways that this could be interpreted and what this could mean um, as we make our decisions. And it's challenging, as you can imagine, going into August without some of that information um, for something like lunch that has some such an impact on availability of rooms, staff, um, for what's available for the fall. So we're certainly awaiting some additional information. The numbers for the town um, are still very relatively low. And from what I've been shared and what I've seen for the state of Massachusetts, you know, there was a map, brown being the worst, gold being better, all the way up to green. Massachusetts and Vermont were the only two states that were in the green. And so we've heard the governor say that he feels that it's not necessary to go back in a different direction. Um, so there's going to be a lot of information out there. As you mentioned earlier, um, there are some, definitely some topics that are going to be challenging this year. I think this is shaping up to be one. I know that the, the Teachers Association has reached out to share some of their ideas and thoughts for the fall. We're going to listen to them and we'll work with them to try to reconcile their needs. But I'm sure there's going to be a lot of voices. Um, and I'm not sure at this point whether we're going to get a mandate or requirement from the state or whether it's going to be left up to the locals. So um, I thought I'd just introduce all that. I know that some of you may want to share your thoughts with me so I can keep them in mind as I, as I think through this moving forward. Thank you, Dr. Daly. I always have thoughts, but I will defer to other people first. Anybody want to share thoughts? Um, I am. I have oh, I have ahead. thoughts. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry, Diana. Um, I'll, I'll be quick then. <laughs> um, I mean, it does it does seem like we have to be ready to, in case they in case they specifically say districts should do what they think is right in based on their circumstances, um, and we just need to be ready for that um, and and have a clear idea whether whether it's supported through votes of the school committee or not, or whether it's just you making those decisions. Uh, um, but we, we should all be ready for that because that, that, that certainly is a one way it could go down and, and based on how localized some of the new case, you know, uh, rises in cases are, it, that kind of guidance may be what makes the most sense from a statewide standpoint. So anyway, that's all I have. Diana? Patrick, I don't, I don't think we've seen any trend where Desi left anything to the the local level, everything was so prescribed last year to a T. So, um, you know, and, I, and I'm sure that that's for good reason. And so um, I'm hoping whatever they say is sort of the same thing. So it, it doesn't come down to us, but at the end of the day, um, I mean, you, you all won't be surprised that I am not an advocate of masking our children um, come the fall. And I hope we don't go backwards. Um, I was very happy to see it lifted in the summer. I won't get into all the reasons why I am not an advocate of um, masking our kids in the fall because it's not the time or the place. But um, you know, I, I hope that I hope that we won't go in that direction. Yeah. Chris, go ahead. Oh, Dr. Daly first. Yeah. I, I just want to say I'm, I'm hopeful that we will get clear guidance from the state that is sort of, um, you know, can be applied across districts. Uh, I, I'm hopeful that that's the case because that has been very helpful, as you mentioned, as you make these decisions. Um, so hopefully we will get some clear guidance. 
Chris, any thoughts or? No, I don't have any comments right now. Thanks. Janine. So, I mean, my, my, my thoughts, I think Diane is correct that, you know, last year DESC gave specific guidance, but I also think that the absence of guidance doesn't necessarily need to be construed as them saying that locals should be making all those decisions either. I mean, if DESC is saying that they don't think masks are required, that is a statement in and of itself. And I, I think last year we tried, there was a lot of different people saying different things and we tried to orient around what DESC was saying. We tried to orient around, you know, North Reading Public Health, uh, you know, Board of, Board of Health. And I, I don't think we should necessarily change that this year. I think if DESC is not, you know, saying things are mandated, if the North Reading Board of Health is not saying things are mandated, I think that is saying something right there. I believe that, you know, many students right now are doing summer camps where they're not masked. They're doing sports clinics that are not masked. They're, you know, doing a lot of life that are, are without masks. And, you know, I, I, by no means do I think COVID is over. I'm not saying that COVID's not over. There are variants, there are concerns. We might have to go back, but I, I also think as a parent of, students that were masked every day last year. I mean, I, I just was saying to one of my kids today, what about the possibility? And he almost started crying, to be honest. Like, I mean, he just doesn't want to do it again. And I think that's really concerning. Um, I think last summer we had a lot of meetings with NREA and a lot of it was to try to open it all. I would be happy to participate again in meetings if we want to have those meetings, um, you know, get that group back together again. I think we successfully open last year. We successfully negotiated a contract with a lot of the same people this year, but I actually think envision more friction potentially this year than last year, because there are, there's not this clear guidance. Um, you know, with all that being said, I do think we should do some protocols. Like I think a lot of the extra cleaning that we've done in the past, we should continue doing, you know, we have ESSR funds for this. We, you know, the pool testing, if we can continue that, that's a great thing. Um, you know, distancing where we can, if we don't have to have students on top of each other in classes to at least minimize, you know, the close contacts, that would be good. But I don't know that we, you know, not have gymnasiums in order to account for that. And so, you know, I have very much been in the middle on these things. Like, I think we have to be safe here and there, but I have concerns if, if DESC is not mandating masks, if North Reading is not mandating them. If nobody else is, and we as a school committee start making that decision, I, I have concerns about that, and that's sort of where I, where I lie in it. So, Dr. Daly. So, just a, a few points to that. The um, the pool testing will continue <laughs> for the fall. We'll be able to continue that for those that uh, wish to participate. Um, we have had vaccination clinics uh, for those that are interested, and in that we've been able to get. Uh, people that have even turned 12 since the end of school have come um, to participate in those clinics. So that's good. Um, you know, some of the cleaning will continue, but a lot of the cleaning, even by the end of the year, had already, you know, in the science community and the guidance came out, some of it was determined to be unnecessary. So I think we would, you know, I, I hope respectfully we can make the best decisions there based on the guidance that we have about which cleaning and which um, procedures are necessary moving forward. Um, we do have a lot of supplies and, and, and PPE and, and, and those items if needed. Um, but I do think we have to watch those those numbers. I will say that it was definitely a little murky at the end of the year, the language around whether we needed masks for the summer. Um, it did get it did require a few emails and follow-ups from the commissioner to clarify. And even amongst superintendents, there was still some disagreement about what the message actually was. We we went with what we went with, which was, you know, strongly encouraged, not required. And I do think it would be a step backwards to start to require uh, masks, but there is a chance that that may come out that it's required in some way, shape or form. Um, and again, I'm hopeful that if it is required, that there will be some kind of um, consensus on that. If not, if it is a local decision, then I would be making that decision, bringing it back to you to get some input, um, working with our various groups, 
I know that we'll be able to navigate it, but I, I do appreciate that it it could be challenging this year because it's it's a different scenario um, in that you have many people who are vaccinated. We've also, Michael has, has set up a meeting with some of our um, folks that are renting the gymnasium for the rec department and basketball, because I think that's also a concern as well with others coming into the buildings, whether they're masked, whether they're vaccinated, there may be some questions around how we handle those procedures. So the way, the way we're operating is we're proceeding as we would in a typical year as far as scheduling and planning, but there's a caveat for everyone that we may get information that, that might change us. So I think our principals are, are planning, you know, trying to design the school year by keeping very close in their mind that they may have to have those additional lunch periods. Um, because what we don't want to do is plan for plan A and not plan for plan B and then have something come out in late August, which we know um, has certainly happened a lot. So as we're planning for, you know, men's volleyball or basketball or, or pickup games, you know, folks in the community need to keep in mind that there may be restrictions or there may be, you know, a, additional uh, guidelines there. So I think everyone's on board. Everyone knows that. I think everyone's prepared for some, some possible changes. But at the same time, we're not saying no to going back to a lot of those activities we would do in a typical year. And we're all hopeful that we'll be able to do as much as that as possible. Okay. Any comments, thoughts? And I strongly encourage the vaccination still. <laughs> okay. So, mm -hmm. correspondence. Any correspondence, Dr. Daly? Uh, none at this time. For future business, I think we just changed the next meeting to Monday, August 16th. Correct. There will be a 4.30 meeting in the superintendent's conference room in person only. We won't have the ability to have uh, it streamed on NORCAM. Um, that'll just be in the conference room if you'd like to attend. And our general meeting will be at 6.30 that evening. Um, and then Monday, August 30th, we will have another meeting. And if we need to meet again, we can meet again. Any other comments, thoughts before we entertain a motion to adjourn? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I think you have to say something, Janine. So moved. So moved. Second. Second by Rich. We have a motion by Janine, a second by Rich. Janine. Aye. Rich. Aye. Chris. Aye. Diana. Aye. I'm an eyes well. Five zero. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy your summers. Good night. Good night, Good night, Good night everyone. Bye.